hey, this is Joe East here. I'm going to show you how to do NLP with a Hooters girl, and we're complete strangers. Watch this. So, Allison, tell me, if you had $10 million in the bank in the morning, and you woke up with that $10 million in the bank, you didn't have to do anything, or you could do anything you want. What would Allison do tomorrow morning with $10 million in the bank? Boom. What would Allison do? I would put down payment on a house, finish paying off my check, so and buy, finish paying off my check, and buy an apartment complex. So I would have to put payments on your truck. Yeah. Okay. And buy an apartment complex. Oh well, yeah, I would buy an apartment. Awesome. <laughs> but I would buy one I would renovate and make better to where. I'd buy it cheap and make it better. Yeah. And what was the first thing you said? I would put it down here in the house. Here in the house. And you would uh, That's just the finish first. the truck thing and then you would invest in real estate or apartment, yeah. you said? Yeah. Awesome. And I would probably get my son something. Get a what? Get my son something. Your son something. Awesome. Okay. I want to pay my hands. I don't have to work as hard. Awesome. You like, you like, you're a musician or you like music? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. Just... I'm not a musician. You would like to be. I don't play music. I sing though. Okay. Um. So I'm gonna fill in four categories based on the answer you gave me, and I'm gonna feed them back to you. And psychologically, I mean, it should click. Like you're gonna say, "How do you know that?" And it's gonna feel like I'm reading your mind, but I'm not. Uh -huh. It's just gonna feel like it. I, I can't read minds. Okay. Like <laughs> All right. So, first category is either a visual, auditory, or kinesthetic. The striking thing I've noticed what you've done in your answers, you didn't say anything visual and you didn't say anything kinesthetic, so I figured you were auditory because you and I kind of sort of naturally have a, a rapport on the subconscious level and I'm auditory. Usually commonality people with the same uh, modality can click in about five seconds. And it's just an unconscious thing. It's just kind of second category is whether you go toward what you want or avoid what you don't want. You didn't say anything about avoiding anything. You would, you like, straight, you know what you want, you want to go straight for it. You said investments, uh, truck, or, uh, but you kind of sort of went toward what you want instead of avoiding what you don't want. And I noticed whenever you said, you know, whitewater rafting and stuff we're talking about, it's like you, you, you know what you want and you only talk about what you want instead of avoiding what you don't want. So you didn't tell me, oh, I don't like basketball or I don't like, uh, whatever hell, cooking or whatever. You just like stayed on the subject because that's what you like. So that's a toward versus a wave vector, that's number two. Number three, similarity versus difference. But I think you're a difference oriented kind of girl. Um, so let's say you see two different objects. And if I, if I would ask you this, I'm not asking you, I would say, hey, where do you see in here? You would say, oh, that one's kind of red. That one's kind of orange. That one's got a bunch of white. That one's got a little bit clear. This is glass. That's different. You, you kind of like start analyzing it differences. Whereas the opposite type would want to analyze and see what they're common. Oh, they're both kind of straight up and down. That one's kind of orange. That's kind of, you see the similarity versus difference sort of thing. I think you're a difference oriented based on what I can see in your aura. Um, all right. So um, I think I typed you out. I want to show you how I do it. Then I'm going to kind of write it down for you. I'll show you how to do it. So here's what I'm going to do right here. So, I'm filling out these categories in the blue sector right there. So, I'm, I'm, this, these are guesses. I'm, okay, so what I'm, what I'm doing is I ask a, a question that it, it evo evokes a visceral response from somebody like a million bucks. Okay, you wake up in the morning, what are you going to do? Right? And you're like, it fires up your imagination. So, usually the responses I get from that, that what I call a power question, allows me to analyze the language patterns to fill out these four categories. So. I figured you were auditory by the process of elimination and the movement vector, I can kind of feel that difference. I kind of just look at your aura, you look like a kind of a different kind of girl uh, and the way you, you, you spoke about what you're going to do, it's not like you were trying to blend in uh, with a crowd or anything, so it's kind of like I say, she's different, the difference. And that also comes with an analysis of two different objects, yeah. right? Yeah, and you were right about that. Yeah, internal versus external. Um, 
I think you're external. Because you did you did mention a song like Oh Crap Almost Forgot. And you said house. You said house, which kind of sort of is, is putting people in there. Kind of it suggests an, an ex, uh, external. When I say external, I'll you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to say you're externally oriented. What that means is you know what you want. Obviously, you want to go straight for what you want. Like I said, that's, that's your directional orientation. However, um, in the identifying your value, i.e. what you want or what you need or whatever, you take your social circle and, and integrate it with your values. Like, okay, what does my son need? Family, friends, lovers, or whatever. Let me just integrate that with what I want, and then we can together go for what I want. Yeah. So that's the external type. And that's why I had to explain that. I said a house. The internal? The internal is like... Uh, if you know the story of Moses with the Ten Commandments, okay. So, so ex, an internal type is like their values are written on their heart in stone. That's the, the weird way to say it, but it's like their values are right here. If their friends want to do something else, they're okay with it. But if they don't, they're still okay with it. They will not integrate with, with the external social circle. So they're willing to separate with, without any any conflict on the inside. Whereas uh, an an external person will have an internal conflict until they integrate. Because that's it's a different type of person, right? It's, yeah. There's no good or bad here. Yeah, it's the way your your brain's oriented, the way you interact with the world, and it's visceral. It's below the neck. It's not the way you think. It's the way you, you feel or your, your soul or your gut or your heart, whatever, you, whatever yeah. analogy you want to use. So I'm going to go over it one more time, and I'm going to do a test. And I'm going to show you how to do this, right? Okay, so uh, Allison, I'm going to feature in here. So let's go over it. Auditory, ring the bell, it clicks. The sound of music. Take your voice and raise it and lower it. So you know that instinctively, what I just said. So your eyes are locked on me because you, you like, this This is telling you something very visceral in your, your amygdala uh, unconscious level, like ringing bells, sounds, voices, loud, you know, that sort of thing. Auditory people like you and I just, just click into those words and I'm going to show you why. And you go straight for what you want. You, you got that. You, you, you don't care about obstacles as long as it won't kill you. Either you're going to have white water rafting, let's just do it. I know I won't die because I trained, right? That sort of thing. Go straight for what you want. Uh, difference. Let's let's separate things out and figure out the differences in things. Or oh, I like different experiences. I like to be a little bit different than other people. Maybe not too much because I need to integrate because you are uh, external, but you like to be a little bit different, right? Maybe a lot, but at least a little bit, right? And external. Integrating the, the values of your social circle, blending into yours. And that's how you go for what you want. So, it might have felt like I was reading your mind, but I'm not. I'm filling in categories and giving you language patterns, language patterns that uh, resonate with, with your categories, but it's unconscious. It's not like you're, you're thinking about that. So, the ch yeah, go ahead. Th this is the fun part. So, I'm going to show you that this works, uh, and then I'm going to show you how to do it yourself. So, and the, the, the showing it how it works is the funnest part. So, let me, for first of all, we get the modalities back and then we're gonna do a check, right? So, um, auditory, rings a bell, clicks, music, tones, tonality, speaking, tell me what you mean. Speak to me, talk to me, I want you to talk to me. I need to, I need to talk through my problems, right? That, that resonates with your, your psyche because it's under the neck, it's instinctively for you. Toward what you want, you don't care about obstacles hell, I don't care about obstacles, one that won't kill me. Uh, let's figure out the differences and things, let's analyze things, take them apart and figure out what's, what's going on here. Uh, I need to consider my son and my value systems because I, I want to integrate you know, my family, my social circle into my value systems and then I'll go for what I want because we got to do this together, we have to blend in, right? Okay, so here's the, the fun check. Uh, now, Allison, if you don't mind, are you right handed or left handed? Right hand. If you don't mind, I would like you to spin your left hand in space like this. Just wiggle your fingers like you're 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 messing around maybe with a piano or you're, you're fixing to ring a bell or something like that. And we're gonna do a, a check here, show you that whether or not this worked or not. So you ring bells, auditory. You, you know exactly what you want in the white water rafting piano analysis, analysis, right? So I'm gonna uh, do something with my hands here to kind of prove that, and I'm gonna show you what I did afterwards. She's a little bit nervous, so let's uh, let's ring the bell. Looks like you're ringing a bell. Okay, cool. All right, she's she's kind of following, but a little bit hesitant because I'm obviously a stranger. To you. So, all right, cool. So if you can move your arm this way, I'm gonna just put the back of my hand on your like your forearm right there. Yeah, right there. So here's the back of my hand here. 
Just so you know, just so you know what I'm doing. Yeah. So I'm gonna put my hand right there, right on your shoulder, right here, and you'll notice your 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 your, your responses to me. I'm a complete stranger to you, but I, I fed you these these modalities, which kind of seeing me as a person. So you're not you're not jerking back or anything, right? So you, you kind of sort of your your animal brain says this guy's friendly. Uh, he's not a threat to me. Otherwise, you'll be jerking away from me. But you notice you're like pulling away. So you notice when I did an opening here, you were trying to fill it, and that's kind of a friendly signal, like, oh, I need to help my friend. There's a void here. Let me. Yeah. So that, that's kind of, so the, so, right, right. So that's unconscious, right? It, it, what I did was, is like, I, I synchronized my nervous system with yours by feeding you back the modalities, and then your amygdala said, oh, friend, and, or, or at least not an enemy. So this guy's not going to hurt me or nothing because. Uh, uh, in, in the wild, animals that are friendly, they, they match and marry each other bodily. Like, if they tilt their head that way or if they move that way, they're going sim to similarly match a little bit with each other. If they're fighting or enemies, they're going to cross-match. And then that's going to be fight or flight. So enemies cross-match and friends match. So what we do, so I, I basically matched your language pattern, your amygdala, your uh, your unconscious mind, relax, got out of fight or flight mode because this guy's okay, he's not gonna hurt me, and uh, that sort of thing. And then I, I, I proved it by doing this right here and, and making sure your, 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 your body didn't instinctively jerk away. So if you're a young girl dating, you might've been in clubs or a creep might have walked, rub up against you and you instinctively might just recoil because your unconscious picks up something crazy that your conscious mind didn't notice and the guy is probably the type that you need to stay away from so in a club you might be jerking away from a preview even though you don't know why you're doing it right it's that's just that, that unconscious feeling like my god what the hell or wtf right so